Welcome to Engineering Everyday Equity. I'm Anthony D. Mays, software engineer on the data visualization team here at Google. In this series, we discuss practical ways in which we can build equity, diversity, and inclusion into the product design process. And in this episode specifically, we're gonna talk about the understanding phase. And so I would love to introduce to you Livy, who's gonna help us talk through what the understand phase is and how we can use some practical tips to really understand what the problem is. Thanks Livy for being here with us today. Thank you, happy to be here. In our last episode, I had the great pleasure of hosting Lea Colligado, and we talked about the nuances between equity, diversity, and inclusion. We also talked about practical ways in which we can involve stakeholders into the process, such as by encouraging executive buy-in and allyship. And we also talked about things like inviting folks from diverse backgrounds into uh, the product discussion to perhaps hold lightning talks. One of the things that I find um, sort of difficult to understand is how I can better get stakeholders involved in the design process. You, you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, I know what you mean. That can definitely be a challenge because we're really trying to balance, let's push out new features, but let's also take the resources to have diversity and inclusion and make things accessible. I'm an accessibility champion on my team and I'm lucky to have other people who also value diversity, inclusion, and accessibility on the team as well. And together, I think we mostly serve to remind the executive stakeholders and people about the importance of having this as a value. And beyond that, I was born and raised in the Pacific Northwest. I'm Asian, I'm the child of immigrant parents, and I also identify as queer and non-binary. I think it's amazing how diverse my team is. We have people who are different ages, who are have different work experiences, different backgrounds, race, gender, and even different working styles. And I think everyone brings something different to the table. And it's really great that it's a safe place for people who have different perspectives to be able to share their ideas. I also feel like I've learned a lot from being an accessibility champion in terms of just being more cognizant of people with different abilities, but it's really about being able to see my work through someone else's eyes. Well, yeah, I really appreciate uh, you saying that, seeing your work through other people's eyes, because as someone who is a black man, who's come from Compton and who's also Christian, uh, I really think it's important that people in tech understand the unique background from which I come. and for other people that I know and have met in this industry uh, who are different and don't fit the traditional background. And so I can really appreciate that it's difficult to think about empathy and to really practice that. It can be challenging at times. I'm glad that I'm at a place where people are able to share their ideas and I'm just able to learn and just learn more about other people because everyone has a story and something to teach and something to learn. So in terms of uh, talking about these ideas, I want to bring this home to a hypothetical app that I have called Scholar. And uh, it's a hypothetical app right now, but the more I talk about it, the more I think I should you know, spend some 20% time and try to get it done. But before we do that, let's talk about the ABCs of inclusive product design. The ABCs of inclusive product design are, A, address diverse needs of current and future users. Though you may have a target user, who else could possibly be using your app? From what country do they hail from? What kind of educational background do they have or access to technology? B, build for everyone with everyone. In addressing those diverse user needs, does your team reflect some of that diversity? If your team is not diverse, you are bound to have blind spots. C, continuously test and improve. Through iteration and debugging, you may find your product is not as inclusive as you had originally thought. Did it somehow not consider men and women and the spectrum of gender identities? Does it exclude people from different locations, beliefs, or backgrounds? In various ways, we'll be returning to these concepts. It's good to revisit them, to ask yourself those high-level questions that drive design and functionality, along with important questions of what problem you are solving for and what's your underlying mission. Establishing the ABCs can become second nature to your process. So now that we know about the ABCs, I wanna talk a little bit about this app that I wanna build. So again, the app is called Scholar and it's designed to connect high school students uh, who are graduating with schools and scholarships. And so it's sort of designed like a dating app for students. 
uh, that can help them connect with the institutions of their choice and understand more about what scholarship uh, opportunities are available. In the previous discussion that I had with Leah, we talked about some practical tips for baking in diversity and inclusion into the design sprint process. And so now we want to talk about, or I'd like to talk about understanding the problem. Are there some practical tips that you can give me in that area? So the first part of the sprint, this understand phase, where we really get to get into the heads of the users and together try to gain an understanding of who our users are and how we can make this product for them. We listen to lightning talks and lightning talks are essentially where we are hearing different perspectives of how this app might be used and getting a better understanding of the product. So the note taking process of this is we're going to be taking sticky notes and we have blank sticky notes where we write HMW on the top and HMW stands for how might we and this is how we can start reframing pain points of our users and turn them into opportunities. Well, that's excellent. That's a great idea. Matter of fact, as it turns out, got some HMWs already ready to go. Oh, awesome. Let's take a look. So, all right. So here are a few that I have. Uh, how might we demystify the college application process? Um, also, how can we make it easier for high school counselors to connect with their students? And then I also wanted to know about how we might uh, help colleges reach students beyond just looking at their SAT scores or their GPA. Awesome. This looks like a really good start to some how might we's. Um, is it okay if I make some suggestions? Absolutely. Awesome. So here you have how might we make it easier on high school counselors. Mm -hmm. Well, I was recently reading an article about how it can really help students to start the conversation about college earlier, maybe even middle school. It mm -hmm. can really turn, well, are you going to college into where are you going to college? Make it more of a sure thing. So what if we expanded the audience to younger ages as well? No, I really like that. Uh, matter of fact, I've got sticky notes and marker right here. And maybe another suggestion could be for another how might we. How might we start the conversation on financial aid and merit-based scholarship? As a general piece of advice, I would say that you want to think of a diverse group when we're thinking about how might we's and call out if someone thinks that a how might we might be relevant to too narrow a group or might be too homogenous. Ah, so you're saying that I should think about how to stretch it out to a larger group. Yeah. So next, shifting gears a little bit, we're going to talk about criteria for success. I would say when making your criteria for success, go ahead and set some inclusive criteria. So have you thought about any of that? Uh, yeah, no, of course. I want to change the world. So there's that. <laughs> but um, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that 30% of my new users should be first generation college students. Uh, in the challenge statement that I talked about with Leia earlier, uh, we talked about how it would be great to build an app in 2018 that connects high school students with the colleges and scholarships that they need and to specifically focus on first generation college students. So I'd love to see 30% of my new user base uh, be first generation college students. Uh, I think it'd also be great piling on top of that, having an additional 10% of new users say, uh, who are outside of the normal you know, college age of 16 to 18. Yeah, I'm liking how we're expanding and diversifying the user base right here. Um, I also see that you have a how might we help people with disabilities and just in general, um, making sure that college admissions process is more inclusive. So I would say maybe we could think about some criteria in terms of making sure we give specific call outs to colleges that have good diversity ratings or strong student life for underrepresented minorities. Oh, okay, yeah. so I see what you're saying. You're saying that I can also use this app to incentivize institutions that focus on diversity and inclusiveness and sort of give them a pat on the back to help encourage them to do it more. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Livy, for joining us today. I really appreciate your wisdom and insights in helping us with the understand phase of the product design process. So great having you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I had a really great time and I'd love to hear more about Scholar and keep me posted. Well, of course, you know I will. So let's just review real quickly. Uh, we talked about the ABCs of the inclusion process. A, addressing the needs of not just our current users, but also future users. Uh, we talked about B, building for everyone. And lastly, C, continuously testing and improving on what we're building. So those are great ABCs. We also talked about 
HMWs, how might we, and thinking about how to keep from making them too specific so that we're focusing just on a homogenous group of users, but really expanding to think about uh, all the potential users that might be interested and able to use this app. We also talked about making the criteria for success as inclusive as possible. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Engineering Everyday Equity. If you'd like to learn more about how to build more equity, diversity, and inclusion in your company or products practices, feel free to visit the link in the description below. If you have a question, drop that in the comments. And make sure to tune in for our next episode, where we're gonna talk about the validation phase of the design sprint process. Thanks a lot. Oh.